Many of us may have seen the Python component while we're using the Grasshopper. But as a question, what does it exactly do? Why using Python component makes us more capable? And why does it even exist? Efficiency as a parameter makes us faster and more creative. Python is a powerful programming language which is built to make things more simple because they have tried to make it more human-like language. So these are some advantages of learning Python. Grasshopper component reduction. Creation of new tools. Motion creation with feedback loops and many other advantages that you will find out during the course. So let's see some examples. This is an intermediate course for Python in Grasshopper and you won't need any prior knowledge of any programming language. But a basic understanding of Rhino and Grasshopper is required. You should be comfortable with basic modeling functions such as creating different geometry types including points, curves, and solids. What we're trying to do in Parametric House is to get more familiar with this programming language and this component. Our course starts with some examples from basic Grasshopper components as the reference. Grasshopper library will guide us in our path. Then we'll talk about what is a flowchart and how does it affect programming to be more simple. And we'll talk about data structure and a sense of geometry to build the ability of design your personal projects. Hello and welcome to the first episode of Grasshopper Python Lesson. Today we want to talk about basic structures of Python component and variable definition in Python. Also take a look at Python editor, write a simple code and at the last using Grasshopper library to use Grasshopper component in Python. The component structure. Basically components resemble a factory. There is an input which goes through some changes and the result will come out as the output of the component. Most of the Grasshopper components do the same thing. Let's get more precise on Python components. I'm going to describe everything from left to right. This is a proper way to see what is happening in Grasshopper. So at first we see those input ports. So you may think this is quite similar with all other Grasshopper components, but there are some differences. I would rather like to show you instead of talking about it. Let's head into Grasshopper and compare component inputs. I'm gonna drop down a basic component. I think distance is a good one. So right click on the radius input to see what's going on here. As you can see there is a couple of extra options. These options can be separated in two parts. First, type hint. Second, accessing type. We will discuss about this in another episode. To see what are they, go back to our distance component. As you can see, there is a tiny hexagonal shape here. And there is something on it. Hmm, interesting, because I also found out another one on the top bar. Let's see what another input has. Another hexagonal shape. Well, we should notice that they all represent a thing. A thing that is common with all hexagonal shapes on top. Let's bring some of them. These components actually do nothing, but they contain something, and the shape will tell us what are they containing. Think of a basket that can help you to store things, but there is a difference. Each container is made to store something in particular. For example, you can't store a box in a number container and so on. So we should store things in its own type of container. Let's jump back to our Python component, then right-click on an input and click on type hint. There are many different types of containers to store things. These are some types that are necessary to know at the beginning. Integer, a number which is not a fraction, a whole number. Float, represents real numbers and are written with decimal point dividing the integer and fraction part. In Grasshopper called as numbers. Strings, a string is a sequence of characters. A character is simply a symbol. For example, the English language has 26 characters. Now let me tell you something. In programming, it's not common to say container. We call them variables. You can enter Python editor by double-clicking on the middle of the component. You can see a lot of text here, but they are not going to help us. So I delete all of them to have a nice and clean look. The first thing that I'm going to talk about is how to add value to our output. This is quite easy. We just need to know what our output name is. And by default, it's A. Okay, all I'm going to do here is to write a simple expression like A is equal to 2. 
Then hit OK and I'm gonna connect the panel. So here it is. Reassign value whenever you want, but Python just reads the last order that you give it. We can also use basic operations like addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division on the other side of the equation. So let's type a is equal to 2 plus 2. Hit the test button if you don't want to close the Python editor. a is equal to 3 minus 5. a is equal to 6 times 3. a is equal to 10 divided by 2. So let's use those outputs. Okay, as we said a bit earlier about how inputs are working, we want to write a code which adds two values that come from our x and y input. Okay, I want both of them to be float. So I right click on x, hit type hint and choose float. As I wanted x to describe only one variable, so I leave accessing on item access. I also do the same thing for y input. Head on type hint and click on float. Then let's set x to 2.2 and y to 3.8. So now we assign our input variable and now we want our output which is the sum of our inputs. a is equal to x plus y. Hit OK. Congratulations, we wrote our first line of the code. OK, so let's write another one. We want to create a Python component which uses length and width of a rectangle and gives us the area of the rectangle. We begin with changing input names. Right click on it, then change x to length. And do the same thing for y and change it to width. OK, then change the type hint and set both to float. And I'm also going to change the output name to make our component good looking. Change A to area. So now open Python editor. Write the equation. Area is equal to length times width. Hit OK to close the editor. OK, I'm going to set the value for length and width. 34 for length and 22.5 for width. Good! This type of practice will help you to better understand about programming syntax. You can import Grasshopper components inside Grasshopper Python Editor. Open Grasshopper Python Editor and type import. As you can see, basic operations are already installed on Python. But there are lots of things that Python doesn't have like Grasshopper component. In order to use them, you need to import them at first. Import ghpythonlib.components. Then, for example, I want to draw a circle. Circle is equal to ghpythonlib.component.circle. Now you bring circle component in Grasshopper Python. Okay, let's see how does a circle work in Grasshopper. Instead of giving a plane, we can use a point and a radius. Let's go back to our editor. So in order to giving input in the code open circular bracket, type your inputs. At first, we need to define a point as our circle plane. Type gh.constructPoint000 for the next input, which is the circle radius. OK, I set radius to 2 and hit OK. By the way, I forgot to change the output to circle because we use circle variable instead of a. Now our code works perfectly and we can have the circle. But typing whole import is too hard. We can create abbreviation for ghpythonlib.component like gh. Okay, so type as gh at the end of the first line. Now we can bring Grasshopper library just typing gh. Okay, I'm gonna rewrite circle component. Circle is equal to gh.circle gh.constructPoint0004. You can use anything else for the abbreviation. Now it's time to make this code using Grasshopper input. I'm gonna name x to point and change type hint to point. Change y to radius and change type hint to float. Okay, let's open editor again and change our code. Hit OK. I'm gonna add number slider for radius and define a point for our center. 
So far, so good. That was the basic structure of Python Grasshopper component. You are now able to make more simple Grasshopper-like components. It would be a perfect practice to make some simple components till the next episode. See you on the next episode.